Hello. Today's video is going to be a bit different. I'm going to be making a moisture detection system for my pot plants using galvanized nails. We're also going to be using an Arduino Uno, maybe two, some 10k ohm resistors, a breadboard, just a little one, and some wire, some more wire, lots of wire. The reason I'm doing this is fun. I've got about 12 plants in my room and sometimes I forget to water them, quite often I forget to water them and I kind of thought it'd be cool to yeah, have them play a chord or something whenever they get thirsty, something nice and gentle. So getting these two uh, nails ready, they're galvanized so they can be left in the water without rusting, they're also conductive. And I'm just getting some jump cables ready to connect the Arduino to the breadboard. We'll use black for ground, so that goes into the ground socket on the Arduino. Plug that into the top row. Next we'll put the red wire in the 5 volts. Plug this into down the bottom here. Alright, so we have a row of ground and a row of 5 volts. Next up, we need to connect the analog zero pin to a row on the board. So I'm going to be using analog zero as an input to tell us what current is being moved between the two nails. Now we have the 10k resistor. This goes between the ground and the analog zero, which is going to be the probe. This is sort of a pull down resistor, so you can think of a, a garden hose, which is the circuit, and the water flowing through the hose is the electricity. So this resistor is like a kink in that hose, it restricts the flow, and it just makes things more manageable for us to, to work with, more predictable, it gives us more stable readings. Without it we'd have quite a lot of noise and it could fluctuate wildly, so we don't want that. So that resistor goes between the ground and the analog zero, which is connected to the Arduino. And now I'm cutting the wire, which is going to be used to connect to the nail and plugged into the breadboard. So once again, the two nails are going to be probes that go deep into the soil. We're going to try and keep them pretty, pretty, pretty close, but not touching. Maybe five millimeters, ten millimeters. Let's see how we go. We'll do some tests. So I'm just stripping this with some pliers. I don't have proper strippers. It's also a pretty fine uh, single copper core wire, so you need to be a bit careful. Okay, let's wrap this exposed copper around one end of the nail. And it's pretty much a perfect loop, which is good because I will solder this and I do want to be able to solder copper to copper because I don't believe solder will stick to the galvanized nail. So just the right length to create a loop. Okay, that's one done. Here I'm just deciding I should probably measure the resistor, make sure I've got the right one. I get very confused with the colors and the layouts of all the different resistors. Just get my 
soldering iron up and on, ready to go. Alright, let's turn this on. Touch a probe on each side. And we should be going up and up and up. Eh, 9.94k, that's good enough. We can turn this off and put it away. Some uh, water and sponge. I don't have the fanciest equipment, but it does the job. Right here is my super awesome whole thing in place majig. So I'm going to use this to solder the wire onto the nail. Just use the other clamp to just keep the wire a little bit tight. Probably not necessary, but hey, we've got that extra hand, might as well use it. Mmm, lead. Alright. I'm just gonna put a little drop of solder with the two copper pieces of meat surrounding the galvanized nail. That should be enough. Just let that cool down for a second. Unplug that. Unplug that. And it'll just chuck it in the pot. Just for now. Just for safekeeping. Now I'm getting some more wire. This is going to be for the other pin. So this one's going to have the plus 5 volts coming through it. I just need to cut myself a piece that's relatively the same to the last piece, the yellow piece. Ultimately, once I start getting more and more of these probes, I'll, uh, I'll come up with some systems so they're nice and neat. Maybe we put little, uh, little 3.5 jack pins on them and little sockets on a box or something. So in this video, I just want to get a proof of concept. I want to make sure it's going to work. Or not, or not work. I just want to have a bit of fun. Okay, looks like the red wire is ready to be soldered. Let's give it a, a little extra tightening. Just a little bit. Mm, a little bit too much, but I'm no pro. That should do the job. Right. So we have our two probes soldered to two pieces of wire. And now I'm thinking, hmm, it's not too strong because the solder didn't stick to the nails, so it might actually just fall down. It's just a a loop, a loop around the nails, so just having to think what we can do here. Maybe some glue.
Hmm. All right, I'm gonna get a piece of cardboard out. This is what I do when I start using anything to do with glue or adhesive, just so I don't get it on my table. I'm angling these down slightly so gravity pulls the loop towards the head of the nail. So I've got some Gorilla Glue here, which I really like, but the issue is it takes hours, 24 hours to be safe, and yeah, not going to do that. So I am looking around for some super glue, which will be a bit messier, almost guaranteed to get it on my fingers. But instead I find a little piece of shrink, what do we call it, shrink wrap. So this is a nice round rubber piece of plastic that you can put over things and when you apply heat it shrinks it in, it sucks it all together, and tightens it up. It would be a lot neater. Now I don't have much of it but this little piece should do just fine. So. Oops, I accidentally broke one of the connections. It's the problem with not having proper wire. Wire strippers is, uh, yeah, you can really weaken the copper with just one tiny little grip. Okay, so that's all. Cut a little bit of this shrink wrap off. Shrink wrap the right term? I'm not sure. Shrink roll, maybe. So you see, I'm rolling it up over the connection, over the solder, and I don't recommend using a <laughs> a blowtorch like this, a butane blowtorch. But you know, that's what I've got, and that worked very quickly. It's now shrunken down and secured everything in place. One more for fun. Maybe shouldn't be using that torch right next to a big thing of Gorilla Glue, I'm not sure. If this video has been posted, you know everything was fine. Now to get the shrinky stuff on the second nail. You'll see I've gone up from the bottom. Bit of burst of heat. Nice. All right. That should make our probes much more secure. A bit neater. Get a bit more life out of them. As I said, if this works, I'll probably look into some kind of more permanent solution. Probably need some better wire than just a single core piece of copper. It's very, very easy to break. It's quite brittle, it's quite bendy. Here's a close up. You see, we've uh, got a little bit of a burny burny on the yellow there, but that's okay. Shove them in there. And that one in there. Alright, let's get the computer out and do some code. So the Arduino needs some code to run and on the computer this is where I tell it what to do. We're going to create a new int which is moisture sensor and we'll give that a value of zero. So these are just kind of storage areas for values that we're going to be getting. And I'm adding a comment like a tidy kiwi analog pin for 5 volts next line we're just going to set up 
the moisture valve. And we don't need to give that anything, it can just sit there and wait. Now in the setup, which is where we set everything up, we need to initialize the serial port. So we'll do that with serial.begin brackets and we'll give it 9600. That's the board rate, which is how fast it how fast it polls everything. 9600 is a pretty fast amount for this. Pretty standard. Into our void loop. This is where we actually read the pin over and over and over. So we're going to say moisture val equals analog read. And we're going to read moisture sensor. Remember, moisture sensor is set to zero. So this is doing analog read zero. It's reading the analog pin number zero. Then we're going to print moisture sensor reads then we'll do a serial dot print ln and now we'll display the actual value of the pin which is moisture val. And yeah, let's, uh, let's add a delay, a delay 100 or a del 100, just so it's only updating itself every 100 milliseconds. It doesn't need to be that fast. Okay, let's try to compile that. Oh, an error. Where is it? It has to be something simple. Aha, uh -huh. we have not completed this line. Semicolon, all good. Let's compile again. Oh, we're still getting an error on number 10. Hmm. So I've got it changed to analog read zero. What's going on here? It says analog read was not declared. Ah, I've spelt it wrong. It's supposed to be A N A L O G read. Let's test that. Okay, that compiled. Good. Let's change the zero back to the variable which was moisture sensor. This will be handy when we add more plants to the scripts. Let's verify that. Everything's looking good. Okay. That should be the code done. So, we'll make sure we've got our UNO board selected. Yep. Make sure we choose the right port, which is 9. Worth keeping note of that. And I'm just going to hit upload. So that has now uploaded the code to the Arduino, which is running. And if we open the serial plotter here, we should start seeing the current between those two probes. Let me just touch those probes with my finger, see if that does something. It doesn't seem to do much. Hmm, maybe this scalpel, probably not the most conductive thing I could use. I'm just trying to get a a sudden reading out of them to make sure they're actually live. Hmm, slightly worried at this stage. Although we do have a fairly high reading of around the 770 mark. Let's just pull the probe out. Ooh, big drop in value. So that's a good sign. And we'll pull the other one out. Let's have a look. So as I touch them, massive spike. As I let go, we go all the way to the bottom. And we're pretty much going from zero to a thousand. Thousand, zero. Thousand, zero. Very good. Okay, let's carefully place these back into the plant. Try and get them as close as we can without touching. 
should get a resting moisture lever now. Alright, seems like we're at about 338, 339. So I did water this plant a couple of days ago, so it should be nice and moist. But yeah, let's go ahead and add some water and see what that does. Right over the probes. There we go. So that give it a big spike, almost up to 900. As the water seeps through the soil, you'll see the soil is now conducting. It's even going up still. All right, I'm going to change the plants out here. I'm going to use a succulent, which I know for a fact has almost no moisture in it whatsoever. <laughs> it's a trooper. It's a real survivor. So, a little plant transplant. Here is the succulent. I'm going to move over to Max now. So, I'm just pretty much using what's in the serial object help file. It's very, very handy. We're just defining the serial, the port, and the board rate. And now I'm sending it a Metro 100, which I can turn on and off. So it's just going to continuously bang the serial object, and it's going to output some data. But you saw the data wasn't fantastic. It was it, We were getting all kinds of symbols. So what we need to do is actually convert them into a group, convert them from an integer to ASCII, and then turn them into a symbol because what we were doing is we were getting the text uh, moisture level reads coming through as ASCII numbers where we don't want that and you can see once we do the conversion to ASCII we get the actual message so you can see the succulent pretty dry moisture sensor reads zero just created a nice big slider make it blue for water and I've set the, uh, the minimum and maximum value from 0 to 1000. Alright, and I've just connected that to the right outlet of the ZL slice. So you can see that blue slider, very small amount of water, but it is, there is something there. It's moving around. But let's go ahead and squirt some water in. Let's have a look. change yet oh a bit of change that's good that's good let's try again the succulent is completely dry here's another squirt oh good 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 let's get up there right. one more to be sure Big squirt. There we go. So now we have a nice, sufficient reading of the moisture level of the soil. I'm interested to watch this over the next days as things dry out. Oh, we're going to do one more. Here we go. Yeah, so I'm assuming that as the soil dries up that meter will go down and you know we can set a threshold so when it gets below a certain point it, maybe it plays a sound or maybe it starts talking that's going to be the fun part we can do anything we want and yeah i've got about 12 plants and i'm pretty sure i can wire them all up at the same time so that's That'll be another project for another week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, more slow style video. I had a great amount of fun making it. I hope you have a great day.